New Jersey? Well, today I'm setting off on a journey that's way more unusual than that. Down to the Earth's core. And I'm inviting you to join me. Are you ready? Ah, come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> Let's go. The center of the Earth lies about 4,000 miles below its surface, so it's going to be a long trip. The layer I'm smashing through right now is the crust. It's something like the skin of an apple, except you can't bite off a piece when you compare it to the other layers that make up the Earth. Hey, look at that rabbit! Those cuties dig tunnels up to two feet deep, so I'm not actually surprised to meet it here. And gross, was that an earthworm? Some of the deep burrowing types, also known as night crawlers, get big and can live 10 feet below the surface. Moving on. Did you hear that beeping sound? That must be one of those gold diggers. A good metal detector still works at this depth. But you're not likely to find any gold. Maybe a large piece of metal, like a car or something. And this must be the Mole Man burrow. Seriously, there was a guy in London who was digging for 40 years under his house and stopped at 26 feet. What was he looking for? Now, remember how I said the crust wasn't really that thick? It's roughly 21 miles thick and made up of basaltic rocks that are under the sea and granitic rocks that make up the continents. So there's oceanic crust and continental crust. Whoa, was that a crocodile? Nile crocodiles dig the deepest burrows among all animals, so you can find them at 39 feet underground. Hmm, apparently not only crocodiles feel the desire to hide from the rest of the world, there are whole underground cities with shelters and catacombs in different countries. The deepest of them lies at 278 feet under Cappadocia in Turkey. Its 18 levels could house 20,000 people. How would they all get there? Today, they could just catch a train at the world's deepest metro station in Kiev, Ukraine, lying at 348 feet. While people have advanced technologies these days to dig this deep, trees just naturally grow this way. In South Africa, there are species whose roots reach up to 400 feet below the surface. I'm currently moving through continental crust, as you see, and two important things you should know about it are that it's about 2 billion years old, even though the oldest rock is 4 billion and it was found on the shore of Hudson Bay, Canada and it covers about 40% of the Earth. Yeah, the rest is oceanic crust. The granitic rocks that it's made of have more silicon, aluminum, and even more oxygen in them than basaltic rocks, because they have access to open air on the surface. The crust is the source of all the metals and minerals humans have ever used, except for diamonds, which are much deeper. I think we'll spot them later. Do you have pockets? <laughs> What was that? People in their running gear? As crazy as it sounds, in 2004, a half marathon was organized in the Bocce salt mine in Poland. It was the deepest half marathon ever. You don't often see people running at a depth of 695 feet after all. Boy, nothing can surprise me now that I've seen this, except for maybe bats. What are you guys doing here? 1,000 brown bats spend every winter in a New York zinc mine. <laughs> How cozy. Ooh, it's getting cold. This is the deepest point you can find permafrost, or permanently frozen soil layers at. Speaking of frost, the Earth's crust serves as an electric blanket that covers the mantle. It's rich in the radioactive elements uranium, thorium, and potassium, which produce heat. Moving on, this here looks like a good hiding spot. The deepest cave in the world is Veryovkina Cave in Georgia, the country, not the state, at about 1.4 miles below the ground. And that was a train I heard. Wait, how could a train possibly run this deep? It couldn't until 2016, when the deepest and longest underground railway, Gothard Base Tunnel, was opened in Switzerland. Just when you think you couldn't possibly meet any other living beings down here, 
Here comes the worm from the Tautona mine in South Africa, the deepest multicellular organism. Speaking of mines, the deepest among them is the Maponic Gold Mine at 2.5 miles, also in South Africa. While I'm moving through continental crust, the oceanic crust is never too far, and its average depth is 4.3 miles. It covers around 60% of the surface of our planet, and is thinner, around 12 miles, denser and younger – it's no older than 180 million years – than the continental crust. It's constantly being born at mid-ocean ridges, and that's what makes the continents move. At 7 miles deep, you have your final chance to see the ocean on this trip. We've just reached the Mariana Trench, the deepest point of the Pacific Ocean. Traveling through the crust was fun, but it had to end at some point. And here comes the border where they don't stamp your passport – the boundary between the crust and the mantle. It's the largest section of the Earth, at 1,801 miles wide. It's made up of magma rock and is heavy, making up 65% of the Earth's mass. It stores many archaeological secrets, and is made up of four elements – oxygen, silicon, manganese, and iron. Even though it's basically a solid rock, the mantle is slowly and constantly moving. What was that bling? It must be the remnants of diamonds that were formed here at 93 miles deep a billion years ago. Then, as molten rock, they moved up to the surface. The pressure is getting more and more extreme, and it's getting colder and colder down here. This is the deepest point where earthquakes are born. The ones that come from here are rare and get pretty weak by the time they've traveled 435 miles up to the surface. Another 30 miles down on this journey, and here comes the lower mantle. You can thank it for any tectonic plate movements. Whew, why is it getting so hot? Wow, that was some serious change of landscape. At 1,814 miles deep, the mantle ends and the outer core begins. It's a sunless sea of super-hot liquid metal that's about the size of Mars. This sea has slow-moving currents and magnetic and electrical fields that produce storms and cyclones. By the way, the Earth owes its magnetic field to the outer core. Without it, life on our planet would simply be impossible. Once every several thousand years, something happens in this layer. The magnetic poles reverse, and north and south change places. It's not likely to happen again soon, though. At 2,750 miles, the inner core welcomes you. It's the hottest innermost part of the planet. It's a super-dense solid ball made of 80% iron and 20% nickel that heats up to 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty much the same as the surface of the Sun. The inner core is nearly the size of the Moon and makes up 2% of the Earth's mass. If you took all the water in all the oceans and multiplied it by 5, this would be roughly the same as the volume of the inner core. It remains solid thanks to super-high pressure, which is a million times greater than the pressure on the surface of the planet. Because no one has been this deep, except for us right now, duh, scientists have a lot of research to do in this area. Some of them believe small crystals of iron are born in the outer parts of the core that merge into giant crystals the size of a city closer to the center. That's why the inner core is also called the crystal core. Not so long ago, British scientists found out that the inner core is relatively young, probably somewhere between 500 and 1,000 million years old, and that's nothing in terms of Earth science. It's hard to tell exactly where the center of the Earth is, but it looks like I can put my flag down here at 3,958 miles. Now, that was quite a journey. Now, for those of you who are thinking of packing your bags to go see the Earth's core, I have some not-so-good news. It's technically not possible yet, because there's no way to survive the pressure and extreme heat that are waiting down there. However, if someone built a tunnel that would provide all the necessary protection, it would only take 18 minutes of free-falling to get there. Hey, sign me up!